It turns out that we know only since the early mid-90s that in two evolutionarily old and simple parts of the brain, small neurons are born in the adult brain, build into circuits, and we know about those. But it's always been a question of whether those are special cases and whether, for example, if we wanted to repair the circuitry that degenerates, that dies in ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, the specific neurons that go from the brain all the way down to the spinal cord with all their twists and turns, or in Parkinson's disease here in the midbrain that go up with all their connections, or in Huntington's disease, etc whether those kinds of neurons could really be rebuilt. So what we decided to do was not address that directly at first. What we know is that we can actually put new neurons of all the types I've just mentioned into the brain. We already know that they can send out their long cable-like axons that go all the way down to where they should get to. We already know that we have a lot of the molecular recipe for how to build those. But what we don't know is if they can actually function and whether they could make a person better. And we decided to address this in mice. Most work of these sorts is done in mice because mice have essentially all the same genes as humans. And their brain, although smaller and less complex, has all the basic components. So we can study these complicated issues in mice, and we can also manipulate genes and molecules readily in mice. And then we decided not only to do this in mice, but to look for a model system in mice that would give us a black or white answer. Can we do it or can we not do it? rather than a gray zone of, I think maybe we did it a little bit, but we're not sure. And for that reason, uh, my lab teamed up with my uh, longstanding uh, friend uh, and now Dean of Harvard Medical School's lab, Jeff Flyer, who, and Jeff's lab is expert, and Jeff is an expert, on what's termed in the field energy balance. How does an organism use its glucose and fat and energy to either gain weight or to burn calories. And ultimately, in layman's terms, energy balance really is the study of obesity, of how does the same caloric intake in some people lead to weight gain versus not. I have a fast metabolism, et cetera, et cetera. And it turns out we know a lot in the field about the molecules that control that. And a central one is called leptin. Leptin is a molecule that is made when the body takes in calories and it's listened to like a signal to antennas in a place deep in the brain called the hypothalamus. But more than just the hypothalamus, because many people have heard of that, in a very specific little area of the hypothalamus, four special kinds of neurons listen to leptin. And we in the field, and Jeff Flyer's lab in particular, knows how to recognize those four kinds of neurons, those nerve cells, by what molecules they make, by what kind of electrical activity they have, of who they speak to, and in a certain kind of mice, they have had the gene taken out to make the leptin receptor. So they have all the circuitry there, except they don't have the antenna to listen to leptin. The leptin's there, no antenna, no reception, no signaling. So what happens to those mice? Well, those mutant mice gain extraordinary weight. They become morbidly obese. They look multiple times bigger than their brothers and sisters. And what we thought is that's essentially the equivalent of a neurodegenerative disease in the sense that a whole circuit population, actually four populations, 
are taken out of the system. So what we did was we went back and studied when do those four kinds of neurons get born during development. We figured that out, then we isolated those neurons among others and did tiny, tiny little transplantation of those young immature neurons, essentially at the time they're just coming out of progenitors or what some would term stem cells in the brain, and we transplanted them into postnatal, after birth, after development, mutant mice with no antennas. And what we found, quite strikingly, is that these new kinds of cells turned into the four right kinds of neurons because we took them right at the right time for them to have the ability to do that. Because we put them in a place where the signaling wasn't happening, they could find locations to live and therefore they survived. Whereas if we put other kinds of neurons in, they all just died. They listened to the leptin. They became electrically active in response to leptin to glucose and to insulin just the right way that the, this circuit should work. We could identify even down at the electron microscopic level that they wire in and build synaptic contacts with other neurons both ways. And most strikingly, instead of morbidly obese mice, weight versus time, and their brothers and sisters like this, the mice that we transplanted the correct cells in became overweight but not morbidly obese. So they were about 60% less obese than the other mice. Now, the goal of these experiments was not to cure obesity in mice. The goal of these experiments is not to set up um, a model for human obesity therapy. Not at all. Not for a moment did we ever think about that. But what this tells us for the first time in the field is if we could get the right kind of neuron that degenerates in ALS or the right kind of neuron that degenerates in Parkinson's or Huntington's where individual types or pairs of kinds of neurons die, that there's the possibility if we do it just right, get them just perfect, that they'll wire up and function essentially like normal. And we're working toward that right now in those fields. And we hope over the next few years to rewire those kinds of circuits. So this study is a proof of principle. And now, knowing it worked, we can go forward in these more complex and human therapeutically directed angles.